Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is TB Sky, and today we're going to be talking about the tension that exists between style and technique. And what I mean by that is, well, take a look at the picture we've got in front of us. This is the splash art for the first chapter of the manga Helsing, which is one of my favorite manga. It's by an artist called Kota Hirano. And if you've never read it, you really should. The artwork, particularly towards the end of it, becomes absolutely godlike, and the story is just kind of too absurd to be believed. As a TLDR, it's a manga about Dracula fighting vampire Nazis. And if that doesn't sell you on it, I'm, I'm not sure what will. Nonetheless, go read it. If you haven't read it, I'm going to be spoiling some minor aspects of the story in this video, so if you don't want that, you know, go read it first. But you don't need to have read it in order to understand what we're going to be talking about. You might have noticed it by now, it's been about a minute of this picture on screen, but the anatomy in the drawing in front of you is bad. It, it, it's just bad. It is objectively not good. It is wrong. His hands, which are both completely different sizes, are hanging out somewhere around his knees, which if you stand up straight yourself and try and hold your hands down along your, your side, that's not where hands go. They go somewhere on, like, perhaps the middle of the thigh at best. That is, his arms are way too long, his legs are way too long, his torso is way too short. I'm not sure where his neck is supposed to be connecting to any of it or why his head is all the way up there. His feet are weirdly inconsistent and it really doesn't look like he has a foot on the other side here. And I don't know why his waist is up here, but it is wrong. The anatomy in this picture is wrong. It just is. The anatomy in this picture is wrong, too. His hands are down here. I'm not sure why the hands of this character seem to be so insistent on having a date with his shins, but nonetheless, down here is where they are, and he has these ridiculously long forearms, which just do not make the least bit of sense. For those interested, the correct uh, proportionality in a human arm goes something like the distance from the shoulder to the elbow is equivalent to the distance from the elbow to the knuckles. Not exactly, but that's the general ballpark of what we're working with. Which you can demonstrate to yourself by holding your arm straight out in front of you and then bending it back until your knuckles are more or less level with your shoulder, right? These forearms here alone are longer than the upper arm, and with the hands themselves, it comes to the point where if he were to, to instead stretch his arm out and uh, his forearm out and make it point, you know, uh, 45 degrees to the left, his hand would be out of frame because the forearm is so ridiculously long. The same thing goes here. That is not what arms do. They, they don't work that way. That's not the correct proportionality for arms at all in relationship to the rest of the body. And it's certainly not here and neither his legs nor his hips, nor his torso, nor his midriff, nor his size of his head, none of it is anatomically correct. And the same thing goes for this picture here, where that's not, no, again, the hands seem to be hell-bent on having a date with the knees, but that is not where those things go in relationship to each other. And his feet and his boots are weirdly out of proportion with the rest of his body. And this picture, <laughs> this picture in particular, demonstrates the point in that his hands are bigger than his head, which just should not happen. That's not... Hands should not be bigger than the head. Forearms should not be that long or that large, and that's... No, and I don't know where his crotch and his torso is, but they're not in the right places. And the same thing goes here. That's not how arms work. That's not how arms work. That's not how arms or legs work. That's not how arms work. That is definitely not how an arm works. This is not how arms work, this isn't how arms work, and this isn't how arms work. Neither is uh, this with legs, that's not how they go. This is not how arms work, this is not how arms work, this is not how arms work. And I'm right about this. Objectively, I can prove it. I've, if I sit down and I deconstruct with redlining and figuring out the correct construction of the anatomy of these characters, I will find that it is wrong. I know this because I have done it in the past. It is wrong. It just is. There's no argument here. But it still works, right? When you look at it, it still works. It still sells you on it. It still gets you to go along with it. You still go, oh, yeah. That's what that looks like. That, yeah, that makes sense. You still 
buy into it. It's still plausible. And therein lies the tension that we talked about, because a lot of the time when I criticize artwork, when I criticize a piece of work or I look at the anatomy or I look at some design aspect of something that doesn't work for me, people will come back at me with, but what about the artist's style? Can't an artist just have a style? Can't they just draw things the way that they want? Does it always have to be correct all the time? To which I say, no, it doesn't have to be correct all the time. The artists can have a style. They can have a special expression that is theirs. But when I'm talking about the anatomy or con criticizing the technique, that's not what I'm talking about. Those are two completely different things that interact. They work together to create a picture, but they're not... Criticizing one is not the same as criticizing the other. Because Helsing, perhaps more than any other manga I have ever read, is about style over technique. It's about style over substance. Every panel, every page, every chapter of this thing has awful anatomy. <laughs> it's just a feature of the story. And it's no, it's not all art, deliberate artistic choices by Kota Hirano. A lot of the time it's clear it's because he didn't draw it right. He couldn't. He missed something. He didn't understand quite how the body was supposed to be constructed. It's not always deliberate stylistic choices. It's because he gets it, air quotes, wrong. But it still works. And that's the thing. The distinction between a picture that works and a picture that doesn't is arbitrary. It is personal. Like, when, when you look at this, maybe you go, Hey, that's cool. That works. That works for me. I buy into it. That sells me on the fantasy. I Yeah, I'm with it. It's... I've got it. It's got me. I've suspended my disbelief. It doesn't work for me. The anatomy is just too broken. The character is just too poorly posed. The... Composition is just not right. It doesn't sell me. It doesn't work. But this one does. And the anatomy is just as wrong. Just, don't get me wrong about this. It's, this is not at all how arms work. But this picture, the feeling it's selling, the theme it's communicating, this works for me completely. And the same thing goes for stuff like this, where this arm is ridiculously way longer than the other arm and the forearm here. I'm not sure how it's supposed to be attached to the upper arm, but it's not correctly. It's way too short. And the same thing goes for this picture, where no, that is not how an arm is put together. It's way too long, but I buy it. It works for me. And the same thing goes for this, and for this, and for this, and for this. And for this, and for this. For most of the pages in Helsing, even though I know the anatomy is just completely wrong, even though things have inconsistent sizes that don't make any sense, even though I can spot all the flaws, it still works. And that is the artist's style doing its work. Helsing in particular is a series that relies a lot on rendering. That is to say, all the details, all the lines of the hair, all the wrinkles on the face, all the... Uh, folds and wrinkles and um, rendering and the shading and all the stuff that goes on on the clothes and all these deep heart shadows that kind of obscure things. All of this helps kind of conceal the anatomical and the technical flaws in the picture. It helps make it look not quite as wrong by heightening the realism, by rendering the texture, by rendering the shape and the light on the thing more explicitly. It helps us, our brains go, well, something looks a little bit off there, but I'll, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to I'm gonna buy into that because the rendering works. And this is Kota Hirano's style. Because Kota Hirano has such a compelling, well-put-together, effective style, a lot of the pictures where the anatomy is just kind of awful, it's fine. I buy them. I don't want to criticize them particularly. I don't think it's useful to criticize the anatomy in a picture like, for instance, this one, because what this panel is selling is the inhuman, otherworldly, disturbing reality of the character, who is a vampire, a fuck-mothering vampire, Dracula himself, this unnatural, otherworldly beast, this demon, this monster. So when the anatomy isn't right, when it doesn't look correct... 
that works for me. Like, I, that sells it for me. I believe that. I buy that. This scene in particular, this is taken from a chapter where Alucard is mercilessly slaughtering a group of Brazilian policemen in a hotel. To be fair, they attacked him first, but he's still... He's committing slaughter. Like, it is minor genocide. It is absolutely horrifyingly gory and bloody and awful. It's straight out of a slasher movie. And that's the feeling that the panel sells so well because this is not how arms or human anatomy works at all but when you ask yourself does this panel communicate the sensation of a horrifying monster from some kind of slasher movie horror movie walking towards you down a hallway you know your inevitable impending doom from something otherworldly and horrible coming closer and closer does this picture sell that hell yes it does and that's why if I were to criticize this particular panel, I might say, mm, I think maybe you could have put Alucard a little bit further back in the picture, or at least if you were to break the frame, maybe spent less time on his legs and move his head into focus so we can look more at that bloodied mouth. But I wouldn't go, oh, but the anatomy of the arms is wrong, because that doesn't really matter. Not in this panel. In other panels, it does. In this one, it absolutely does. I don't buy this, because I can see how horrendously wrong the anatomy and the construction and the way that it's it looks is i just no that's not how hands work that's not how arms work that's not how legs work that's not how bodies are put together this picture doesn't sell it for me this one does this one does even though these arms don't make any sense this one does even though that arm doesn't make any sense even though these anatomical features do not make the least bit of sense. These pictures sell it for me. Here, for instance, the Major is our antagonist. He's the bad guy. He's the operatic villain. And opera is really the most apt metaphor to use to describe Helsing because it is that big and grand and self-aggrandizing and overwrought and ridiculous, like opera. And what we need from this panel is a picture of a madman sweeping his arms over his vampire army standing in the background, kind of grasping for the entire world in a panel spread. And since the page accomplishes that so brilliantly, I don't really care that his arms are two completely different lengths. I don't really care that the forearm is, again, way too long, and that this hand is kind of under-rendered and not really put together correctly. I don't really care about that, because the panel, the picture, works. But that doesn't mean I can't still criticize. Like, if someone t asked me to tell them what's wrong with this picture, again, like our hallway scene, I would probably criticize sort of compositional aspects of it more. Like, say, maybe you could bring some of the background vampire Nazis a little bit more into detail, rather than just relying on these white glowing do pinprick dots for their eyes. Maybe you could do a little bit more of that, and maybe you could, you know put some stuff together. I wouldn't necessarily go for the anatomy, but if someone were to criticize this picture for the bad anatomy, they would be right. It's there. It is a flaw in the picture that the anatomy is not correct. But there are instances, like for instance this picture, like for instance this picture, where correcting the anatomy wouldn't improve the picture. And again, this is where style gets to take precedent over technique, because... One of the major themes of Helsing is the thematic connection between Alucard over here on the right and Alexander Anderson, the priest, over here on the right. They're sort of presented as two sides of the same coin-ish. They're presented as, as a weird reflection of one another. And the comic emphasizes this by giving them very similar panels. Here, Alucard is walking menacingly into the frame with anatomy that is quite broken, making him look otherworldly and monster-like and not quite human. And here, Alexander Anderson, who isn't quite human, is doing exactly the same thing. And so, if you had corrected the anatomy, they would look less other. They would look less weird. They would look less strange and distinct and monster-like. And therefore, the connection between them that these two panels in particular are selling wouldn't work quite as well, so I don't think it would be an improvement to correct the wrong anatomy in this picture. For a picture like this one, no, it would definitely improve it. It would make it way better if you just corrected that anatomy a little bit. And the dividing line between these two things can be arbitrary, but the point I'm trying to get to with this video, which is running up on 15 minutes, which is about as long as I want it to go, is that technique and style aren't the same thing. 
an artist having a great art style doesn't mean they don't have poor technique. And an artist having great art, uh, great technique doesn't mean they have a good art style. They're different things. They interact with each other, but they're not the same. And when you criticize one, you're not criticizing the other. And when it comes to evaluating a piece of work and you see someone criticizing one thing, don't conflate them. When someone says the anatomy of this picture is bad, don't come back at them with, but it looks really cool. Because that's not the same conversation that you're having at all. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to get through. You should go read Helsing. If you have any comments, you should leave them down below. I try to read, I read everything because my channel is small enough that I can still do that. And I try to respond to anything uh, where I feel like I have something useful to respond with. So if you have any questions, any comments, anything else you'd like me to take a look at or something else you'd like me to talk about in a future video, leave it down in the comments. Uh, I'll be very happy to read it. You can leave a like if you liked the video. You can subscribe to see more videos of the same kind. And I'm sure by now up on the screen, there will be some links to some other videos I've done that you can go and take a look at if you are so inclined. But um, I guess for now, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.